Thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at the activity timeline. It's a JavaScript add-on that's included in FileMaker 19. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. In this day and age, you would be hard pressed to find someone who wasn't familiar, at least conceptually, with Twitter or a Facebook feed. They would have an expectation that they were looking at information sorted chronologically and grouped by dates. And if they clicked on an event, they would expect to get more information. And that, in its most basic form, is exactly what the activity timeline is. The activity timeline could be thought of as a summary report sorted by date that is interactive and styled to look like social media. So we can scroll through here and we'll see that our events are grouped together. And if I should click on this item, I get a card window that shows me the details, the title, the description, the date, who it's assigned to, and a style. Now I could change this date to match one below it. I believe that was on the 10th. And we'll see that these two now group together. We can change the color, white, blue, green, purple, red, and yellow. The code in the web viewer is both responsive and adaptive. So if we go to this layout, which I have taken the web viewer and I've had it occupy the entire space of the body, and I have anchored it to all four sides. When we go into browse mode, if I narrow my window, the event boxes will become responsive and scale accordingly. However, once I reach a certain point, they will switch to being adaptive, meaning they change in increments, not consistently. At this point, we see it has reached adaptive. It's not going to grow any further. And once I get this big, that's going to go every other side per event, even if they are on the same date. Now, if we do go look at our configuration, we see that it comes preloaded using the activity timeline sample data, and that will be set to the primary key and the date started. So these are the two things that you need to be able to use this data. But you could connect this to any table that you have in your existing solution. All you need is a key and a date. And then in our optional fields, we have the title, the event description, the assigned field, and then we have our card style, which uh, needs to provide a text value in the predefined list. An option that is new to this add-on versus the other ones is that we can select the style, and this is our choice. We can go blue, red, green, purple, yellow, gray, and then there's extra one, extra two, and extra three. Now. Looking at these, I don't believe anyone expects you to use those. To install the activity timeline, I've created a new file, and I'm going to go into layout mode. You may need to show your objects pane by clicking here. Make sure that your add-ons tab is selected, and then come down and press the plus sign. This will bring you to the JavaScript add-ons. We're working in the activity timeline, so we select that, and over here we see a preview, and it shows us what tables, layouts, and scripts it's going to add. At this point, it is installed in our system. If we look at our scripts, we'll see that a lot of new scripts came in. By holding the Option key down and clicking this turnstile, I can close up all of those folders that come in open. Now, to put this on my layout, I simply click it, and I drag it over. When I go into Browse mode, I will have a functioning activity timeline using my sample data. I'm going to go into my configurator, and I'm going to change the style to something different. And now we're going to talk about the difference between a copy and an instance. So this is an instance of this add-on, and that is distinguishable because of this add-on UUID. It's basically naming the web viewer and allowing the different components to work with this web viewer. Now I could copy this and paste it on a different layout, but it must be a different layout because web viewers cannot have the same name on the same layout. Now I'm gonna scale this down, and I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna drag over a new instance. 
Now what's happened here is this has a new UUID. Now we'll see when I go into browse mode that I have the same information coming from the same table, but it's being displayed differently. Let's add our query field. So we're going to go to the configuration. We see that we need to provide a query field and we don't have anything to pick from. So we need to go solve that. If we go into layout mode, we go to our fields and we jump down to activity timeline. Contrary to how the other add-ons work, I don't have a global query field in here to pick from. So I'm gonna have to provide my own. So we're gonna have to go into our database and we're gonna go to our sample data and we'll create a query field. Now let's go to our sample data table where we've added this field. We're gonna grab that, we're gonna drop it up here. So I'm gonna click on my group once, I'm gonna click on my configure button a second time, I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm gonna drag it up here. So I'm gonna change the script now to go to my timeline refresh. I'm gonna change my icon to a magnifying glass. We're gonna remove the JSON object because in these JavaScript add-ons, it is common that the refresh script is asking simply for the add-on UUID and nothing else. I need to get rid of my hide object behavior. So I'm gonna jump in here, select all and delete because I don't want it to be available for everyone. Which is good to point out the configurator button is only visible to users with full access that are using a desktop. It will not appear on mobile devices. And then because we're gonna search who this is assigned to, we're gonna make a drop down list. Let's make assigned to, and we're gonna go into our sample data. We go into browse mode, and now we can pick our person, do a quick search. And now our timeline is limiting it to this person. A very practical way we might use this is to show our users events that are assigned to them. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to create a table called users. In that, we're just gonna to need to make the user field. Now we'll jump to that. Because we're only dealing with a few records, Let's just assign this to our new dropdown list that we made. And we'll just bounce through it real quick. And we'll make a new record and we'll make a new record. We have five records because we have five users. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it. We're just gonna stick this over here. We're gonna go to our add-on. We're gonna drag over a new instance. We only need our query field on this layout. The other fields simply need to be available on our details layout. So if we go into browse mode and we go into our configurator and we go to our filter and we say our query field will be our user and we're going to search in the assign to. And since these weren't keyed, they were just values. And now when we move through these records, we're showing the related events for that user. After making some of the other add-on videos, one of the questions is, how do I make a new item? And this applies to all of the add-ons. And in asking that question, I want to back up a second and say, let's talk about what an add-on is. It's something that you add to your existing solution. It's not a starter. It's not a template. It's you have a complex solution and you can grab an add-on and you can drop it in. And it's the equivalent of copying and pasting from one file to another. And it's doing it in the right order for you so that nothing breaks. At the end of the day, an item is a record. And it's a record in the base table of the layout that you selected in the configurator. So let's look at mine. I simply duplicated the configurator button, cleared everything out of it because this doesn't do anything fancy. I had it perform a script called new activity. This script only has two steps. It opens up a card window of the sample data layout and I made some modifications to it and then it creates a new record. Now, if we see it in action, I moved the title down so that you see that you're supposed to type in a title. And I changed the close button to save. It's doing the same thing. And then I created a cancel button, which is deleting the record and then closing the window. Well, I hope that answered some of your questions about the activity timeline. Remember that liking a video is a great way to let us know that we're producing the content that you find useful. 
It's also good to remember that these videos are about getting you acquainted with the add-ons, and if you're going to use these in a production environment, there are best practices you should consider to save yourself trouble down the road. And we made a video involving some of those called Fundamentals for Using JavaScript Add-ons. There'll be a link at the end of this video. Also, I encourage you to check out all the videos in the series as there are tidbits scattered throughout them that are applicable to the other add-ons. Thanks for joining.